Hello everyone. Yeah, I'm back. So it's the Friday time. Every Friday I am doing some bootcamp. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, Mark's, I don't know which is week already, fourth week. Yeah, in the fourth week in the row I'm doing the bootcamps. Uh, yeah, let's learn something. <laughs> yeah, and today's topic is uh, Sicilian Rosalimo. I mean, yeah, I mean, we'll get to this Rosalim. I'll just make some kind of a introductory message. Uh, why, why the boot camps? I mean, I do believe that I could share with you with some of the knowledge I have. So, and hopefully we we could learn something in the process and also uh, and also have some fun. And uh, Sicilian Rosalimo was one of my first openings, which I did at a professional level. Um, I started cooperation with Modern Chess. There's such a very nice uh, organization called Modern Chess. They publish various uh, databases uh, of opening theory, middle games, end games, and stuff like that. And my very, very, very first topic I did for them was anti Nidorf. Yeah, I mean, I sort of felt it's a great way to start. So back in 2018, I wrote for them the first uh, database regarding anti Nidorf. I think I did quite well. And um, yeah, and then at some moment I realized I need to proceed somewhere further. And the second topic I chose was the Sicilian Rossellino. Um, because, I mean, I realized that obviously, yeah, hi, again, love chess. <laughs> yeah, I saw you. Uh, so I realized obviously neither of isn't every Sicilian out there. So I also need to tackle against uh, C5 Knight C6. So that was the logical choice. So I wrote a database also for that. But I mean, in today's uh, bootcamp, I'm not going to cover only all of that. I want to give you some kind of an overview of the potential plans, what you might play. Obviously, it's not going to be like a complete encyclop encyclopedia to every single move, but you'll get together a better picture and perhaps, who knows, maybe you like the uh, uh, Sicilian Rosalimo much better than the um, open, open Sicilians. Yeah, and by the way, while I while I mention, there's um, while I start with the theoretical part, there's two things I want to mention. Um, today evening, uh, there is uh, given a green light to the first ever modern chess online camp. Yeah, so if you are interested, you can think about it and uh, type in the command. You can see it in the title of the stream! Uh, exclamation mark camp. It uh, contains the most important information regarding it. Uh, the main lecturer of the event is going to be Boris Gelfand. Yeah, so uh, very, very big name, obviously. I am very humbled to be a, as one of the lecturers of the event. It's going to be uh, a really great camp over the three days. And uh, yeah, a lot of participants have already uh, signed up. Oh, wow, thank you, Tottenham. Yeah, <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, I remember you. You were, you were uh, in one of my previous streams, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is the first one. Uh, maybe I can do it for you. You can uh, you can uh, see it here. Type in the chat. Uh, here, there's all the information. Uh, it's Boris Gelfand, uh, Boris Savruch, uh, Pavel Elyanov, uh, Mikhail Marin. Very big names. Yeah, and I'm, I'm one one of them, right? So the camp starts in something like what is the time right now in Latvia? It's 4:30. It starts in four and a half hours. Yeah. So you, if you're interested, definitely you can think about it. But hey, we are not going to talk about it too much. It's just a 30 second advertisement. <laughs> right. Yeah. But the second thing is I wanted to sort of boast about <laughs> is I would like really to thank all of you because if, if, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to get this. Let me show it for you. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday I got a confirmation that I got my Twitch partner status. Yeah. So really I appreciate it. That you are part of my previous streams, that you're watching it right now. I mean, it's the best recognition for a Twitch streamer. Uh, sort of a significant moment uh, for me. So this means I'm gonna be there even for more. <laughs> yeah, I was really working hard toward this uh, Twitch partnership status, and I finally got it yesterday. So it was yay, big, big yay moment for me. So I felt that's like sort of a, a a good moment for a little celebration then. How to better to celebrate than to do some theoretical stuff, right? 
<laughs> okay, okay, let's remove this and go back to the actual chess. So let's go back to the Sicilian. e4, c5, knight of 3, knight c6. You know, when I wrote the database, uh, bishop b5, the Rosolimo, which is something I'm going to advocate, it wasn't really that popular back then. I mean, okay, I mean, people did play it, uh, at, even at the top level. So it was a house called continuation for many top GMs. But I wouldn't say it was exactly the top continuation. But things are rapidly changing. And a really crucial moment was the World Championship match between Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Corana. Um, they played, if I'm not mistaken, at least three games. The first game, the third game, the fifth game of the match. All of them were play played in the uh, Sicilian Rosolimo. And I was really happy because, I mean, I, I did this stuff on all of this Rosolimo, something like um, a couple of months before the match. And there you go. I mean, the best players in the world, they're playing out this line in the match. I mean, it's not. I'm not saying they were using my knowledge, obviously, but it was really nice. I mean, that I analyzed this stuff. So... They were playing in the match, and I, I see all of those ideas, and I recognize them. So it's uh, felt rather important. Yeah, but uh, sort of backstory: why bishop b5 and not d4? As always, there's a reason uh, why I chose uh, bishop b5 instead of the uh, d4. Uh, particularly, the biggest reason is uh, black can go for the so-called Sveshnikov which, not surprisingly, was very quickly picked up by the world champion. So e5, knight e5, uh, d6. And there used to be some big theory. If you check the, how top GMs were playing this line uh, something like 10 years ago, it was really popular. I mean, the popularity waves are coming and going, but it's been always quite a popular line. And there was this uh, bishop g5 main line, a6, knight a3, b5, knight e5, bishop e7. Here, here, there was a sort of an old theory, old theory, uh, with uh, c3, c3, bishop g5. But Magnus Carlsen pretty much proved in his own games that uh, black is doing very much fine. And he pretty much at the top level, I don't think he was actually experiencing single problems in every single game. There's also the move c4, which bears the reputation of sort of a drawish line. I believe the main lines go something like this, uh, b4, knight c2, well, I forgot to check, to be honest, bishop g5, g3, h4, sometimes the bishop goes here, but typically black just plays here, sometimes he exchanges on d5, plays knight e4, and we reach some kind of opposite color bishop um, uh, middle game, which pretty much is harmless for black. Okay, I mean, that was like a very quick introduction to the Open Sicilian, the Sveshnikov line, but that was one of the reasons why I felt it's not enough. I mean, I was always looking for like this uh, positional edge. And not to mention, there's also this hugely popular line right now, which also was played in the match uh, Carlsen against Caruana. It's uh, 95. I remember this move. It was known many years ago before. I mean, before they played this move, and it was considered to be, I mean, it's not special. It's, of course, playable, interesting alternative. Obviously, the idea is to give a fork on c7, so black has to take, take, and there are two moves, either knight e7 or knight b8. Uh, wouldn't you believe it? Um, uh, it's time to learn some Rosalimo, definitely. So uh, it's just just an introduction, very short introduction. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's time to learn some Rosalimo. Yeah, I mean, I'm just telling you why I'm not going here. So the point is here: either knight b8 or knight c7, c4 or c3, two possible moves. Yeah, you're welcome. And it's very sharp game because black typically pushes all of the pawns here forward. Okay, maybe not up to f3, to f4, g4, and uh, white plays some positional chess. Something like, okay, maybe it wasn't like c4, pretty sure it was. Yeah, the most modern move was a4, a5, and whatnot. Yeah, so I never really understood this. And I was looking towards more peaceful stuff, right? And this is when my attention came to bishop b5. So bishop b5 is rather simple. So it's a sort of a sister line of the um, Sicilian, anti-Sicilian, anti-Nidorf. Uh, which is essentially 
uh, knight of three d6 bishop b5 again this idea is the same we develop the bishop we want to make a castle we want to play c3 d4 it's very very simple and in the sicilian rosalimo so knight c6 bishop b5 sometimes this idea it, it remains there although not always i mean it really depends how black is playing here uh, black obviously has a number of continuations here uh, the main moves here include uh, g6, we are, which we are going to have a look at. And then there is the more aggressive move, perhaps e6. Uh, well, perhaps both of them are perfectly fine. And uh, after bishop b5, uh, let's say if black would play d6, then we would reach um, a position from the ante neither of the Moscow variation, where black in the third move, bishop b5, he would have played knight c6. So, I mean, it makes sense as if you are a Moscow variation player in the knight or if you play bishop b5 it also makes sense for you to play the same against c5 knight c6 sicilian because against bishop b5 d6 you essentially don't have to learn anything you already know this yeah so again the idea here is after d6 simply proceed proceed with castle bishop d7 black wants to play a6 and take with the bishop uh, so you play uh yeah, what was it either rookie one or c3 i'm always mixing up yeah so rookie one and it's uh, rather uh odd uh rookie one the idea is not to give up the bishop anymore and uh in in uh in uh most of the situations the bishop retreats to f1 so for example knight of six c3 a6 we retreat here and we just want to take the center so that's the idea and after bishop g4 supposedly black is trying to stop you Okay, I mean, there is this uh, quiet move h3. I already covered this in my previous bootcamp uh, about the Sicilian, uh, I always keep mixing up the name, uh, Moscow variation, Ante Neidorf. So I'm not going to cover it here. So the idea was h3 is possible. Yeah, h3 here, g4, bishop g6, d4 was rather a cute trap. Um, but after h3, actually, black plays on f3. So the best move here I recommend is d4. Takes, takes, and actually bishop takes on f3, g takes, leaves white with an advantage. Yeah. So this is one of those rare lines, rare lines where I believe white has everywhere a solid advantage. So that must be one of the reasons why black is not really playing this line at the top level. If you check the database, I mean, GMs were playing this line, I mean, knight c6, d6, or d6, knight c6. Uh, they're playing it up to something like 2015, 2014, 2015. And then it was rather popular. And if you check the games, it stopped. I mean, nobody's really playing this. So perhaps, I, I think there was some kind of uh, common discovery that there's this d4 move is giving um, a solid advantage for white. I mean, that's my opinion. Yeah, okay, so after bishop b5, there is also a move e6, so it's, uh, it's one of the main moves. Uh, the idea is uh, rather simple. Black wants to play knight g7, uh, play a6, and recapture with the knight. So you might ask, I mean, wait a second, why can't I just take on uh, c6 immediately? You can. Yeah, you definitely can. It's a completely playable line. And I believe this line was uh, played recently. Now I'm failing to remember. It was either... Wasn't it in the clutch chess uh, final? Corona against Carlsen again. I'm pretty sure they played the topic line. It's um, to my great shame I didn't check those games because I was sort of looking at them uh, from, a, from a distance. But I'm pretty sure that Carlsen was playing e6 there. Yeah, so he, he was trying to include this in his repertoire or perhaps seeking for some interesting positions. And the main idea here is that if white goes for bishop takes on c6, now obviously black doesn't take with d takes on c6. It makes no sense. Because typically, perhaps not immediately, you want to play e5. And this bishop is really, really terrible. I mean, very difficult to bring it to life. So you want to play something like d3, c4 completely to shut it out from the game. I mean, let's not let's not mix up. Let's not mix up, guys. Uh, there is this uh, highly popular line which was championed by Magnus Carlsen himself. Uh, we are gonna get to it. So after bishop b5, g6, bishop takes on c6, and d takes on c6. Yeah, he played this in the World Championship match. 
and with the idea to perhaps at some point to play bishop g4 but i mean not really uh but the bishop is feeling really alive and black has not played e6 and uh imprisoned his own bishop so the idea of e6 is completely different so after let's say bishop b5 e6 bishop c6 obviously black wants to take with the b pawn and uh, his idea is he immediately wants to claim two bishop advantage so there you have two promising bishops but he has a shattered pawn structure and double pawns now ah, this is essential what i said yeah <laughs> double pawn shatter pawn structure and he is lagging behind in development and typically let's say if if uh, black doesn't know what he is doing here and white is playing some normal chess let's say something like d3 let's say black is just pushing forward because the pawn can go forward by two uh, by two squares but he doesn't have to something like this okay this is obviously not really good line so that would be sort of as a punishment for black because now white simply wants to play knight c3 something like b3 knight uh, bishop a3 knight a4 rook c1 and really take good care of this pawn on on uh, c5s and uh, look at this bishop on c8 it's not doing much yeah so essentially black pretty much never he never goes d5 uh, so he wants to do something else uh, he would like to play something like d6 and e5 and as far as i'm concerned the general um understanding of this position is if he manages to do it he should be fine should be fine so he could start with d6 he wants to play e5 perhaps let's say i have no clue what i'm doing here from white i'm playing let's say castle black is playing e5 okay i'm just developing the pieces something like making normal moves not really big mistakes uh let's say black is playing perhaps even g6 yeah that would be interesting okay may i make some sort of a window for the king i suppose i'll make all of the normal moves make a normal move supposedly looking normal move and at some point i realize i'm simply worse yeah because i wasn't really active enough so this is sort of a perfect position for black he wants to play f4 g5 g4 and why doesn't have any real ideas how to strike in the center a3 b4 perhaps yeah but black can even play a5 so it's really not easy uh to define the plan here for white so we want to avoid this so we uh, as soon as black plays d6 we should recognize the idea so black wants to play e5 and typically again ideally to play g6 bishop g6 i don't know maybe knight f6 is also good because of the knight h5 i just i just show this a line as a sample line how black potentially developed the pieces and those pawns they're really nice they take a good care of the center so we what we want to do here we want to stop black from doing this and typically as soon as black is willing to play e5 we are playing ourselves e5 so that's the idea we are stopping this idea uh, for good and uh, let's say black is doing again something silly as d5 then he is suffering with the same idea yeah hi doji san yeah it's, it's nice that you are here <laughs> yeah so e5 d5 is not really that great and again you can try to employ the same idea of uh, c4 knight c3 knight a4 target the spawn so black is gonna be suffering uh so typically after e5 black either takes immediately on e5 or he keeps this idea for a later moment so let's say he plays something like uh, i don't know perhaps knight e7 castle okay knight of five as far as i'm concerned is the best move here but okay let's imagine black is playing something like knight g6 now we have to take bishop takes here and ideally black would love to do one thing he would love to play e5 f6 bishop g4 and go like crazy in a, in a really really good looking attack because he has the center he has two bishops but his position has the biggest drawback is these plant uh these weak pawns so you should typically target them so the idea is something like knight c3 
castle knight d2 e5 knight b3 bishop e3 knight e4 and there is a good chance that the black will have to drop the pawn sacrifice the pawn yeah and focus on his activity at the queen side i'm pretty sure i saw one high level game now perhaps it was boris gelfand yeah funny that i funny it's actually boris gelfand I'm pretty sure i saw one of his games in this line now i i'm trying to remember against who it was it was a high level game and he was employing the same idea he dropped his pawn on on uh, on c5 and then he was focusing on a play at the uh, at the king's side yeah but i yeah fortunately i don't remember against who he was playing i mean boris gelfand was playing the black and he has always been a very big fan of of the c5 c6 sicilian way before magnus carlsen right okay so that's the idea anyway and at least you'll have the better understanding how to tackle it so don't allow e5 play e5 black plays something like here here the best is knight f5 to have ideas to jump for the knight on d4 so at some moment you have to take on d6 yeah, i'm not sure at which moment really something like i don't know perhaps something like knight c3 knight d4 that's the idea anyway takes takes and perhaps something like knight e4 knight d2 c3 knight b3 and you want to target this pawn yeah i mean this is sort of um a very double-edged game yeah um i was playing this line myself for some time because when i started to play the sicilian rosalimo this was the first one i was playing this line all the time and I, I liked really the dynamics of the position but i realized at some point that black gets too easy game because essentially if my plan fails i don't get the pawn on c5 i am losing the center i am losing the two bishop uh i mean this is sort of a sharper line i mean you don't have to go there because i believe no i mean rosalimo is not the sharp line not just son it's not it's a very peaceful line uh but it really depends how you play it out uh, i'm just showing this is a rather popular line this bishop takes on c6 again please correct me if i'm mistaken it was played in the clutch this clutch champion showed on how it was officially titled final carlson against karana and now i have a problem to remember how the games went pretty sure it was something like this bishop c6 here knight e7 um there was some early h4 h5 idea to stop the knight g6 e5 idea again a black wants to do the same he wants to play let's say you're playing without any real knowledge knight g6 he wants to play e5 and there was this theory uh white would play e5 and black is trying to destroy the center by f6 and sometimes even voluntarily the king goes to f7 yeah so it's rather rather interesting so pretty sure uh, the main line here was h4 h4 knight g6 is impossible because of the h5 the knight has nowhere to go and if black includes h5 then there is this move i think it was queen e2 knight g6 e5 f6 queen e4 and king f7 what do you imagine this it's crazy <laughs> yeah and the black continues with something like d5 i believe that's sort of an old theory and uh but i believe black is doing fine it's not like uh, white is doing uh, quite badly something like this he will play e5 you want to take this pawn on c5 and who is gonna emerge on the top i mean it depends how you play out this position again typically the knight goes something like here you can remove the queen g3 knight e4 try to eat this pawn and yeah and uh, hope that black is not developing a very serious uh, um, initiative yeah i mean this is uh you don't have to do this obviously so after e6 uh, bishop c6 this is like accepting a thrown gauntlet so black is throwing a gauntlet at you so again it's a psychological psychological game yeah it is good to know i mean it's uh, rather interesting to test at least in a couple of games especially if your opponent doesn't really know much right it's a simple uh, structure based position again take take d3 97 um yeah pretty sure it was h4 um 
yeah h5 and what was the topical line here yeah queen e2 knight g6 e5 yeah i'm pretty sure i'm showing one of the old lines because because i haven't really checked the top modern stuff here and in the game carlson against karana against carlson i'm trying to remember what they played there there was this early push h5 h6 but ah, yeah i mean sorry i i did not really check it i just remembered it they they played it I didn't really expect that, uh, yeah, I sort of forgot about it. Uh, so again, but e6, there is a simpler continuation for you. And after e6, you can simply play short castle. Yeah, by the way, you might ask a very simple question. What if, what if our opponent plays a6? Yeah, perhaps we should have started with this. I mean, obviously now you have to take on c6. Because, uh, I mean, it makes no sense for the bishop to retreat. We take it. If black would play d takes on c6, again, keep in mind, he would love to. He would love to play queen c7, e5. So if I'm playing this position as, as a, a white player, and also the bishop potentially coming out to g4, I would be thinking about something like h3. Not necessarily this order. Yeah, okay, this this is not really in the nice nicest order of the moves because of the queen d4. But let's imagine I would play something like here, here, h3, queen c7. Now black wants to play e5, and I play e5 myself. I don't allow this, so I'm playing against this bad bishop. And if if black would actually play bishop g4, yeah then i mean probably he gets sort of a solid position something like h3 takes takes but then the question is why did he allow doubling the pawns in the first place right so black allows doubling the pawns for uh, at least some some kind of um, future um promises that the two bishops they're gonna get powerful um okay so a6 is not really a great move so after e6 Short castle, knight g7. Now black wants to play a6 and recapture on c6 with the bishop. I'm uh, sorry, with the knight. So here we have a couple of continuations again. When I was writing the database, I was advocating d4. That's rather tricky, actually. So d4, the idea again is it's funny. We started with some sort of a offbeat Sicilian. And we ended up by playing uh, open, just because the knight is feeling weird on e7. So again, the idea is something like takes knight d4. Uh, back in the 2017 World Cup match uh, between Luka Lenic and Fabiano Corana, they are pretty much playing this line the entire match, trying to prove who is right, who is wrong. And the local lineage with black, he was trying to make happen this idea. Knight c6, d takes, bishop c4, and knight g6. Yeah, but I managed to prove in my analysis that um, black is uh, sort of worse there, pretty much in all of the ideas. The white queen goes to h5, so it's something like king h1, queen h5, f4. And it's not easy for black to make a short castle by not getting in trouble. I mean, that's like making it very simple in one sentence yeah but there is uh, also another continuation i mean queen b6 is not really that great continuation because after queen b6 takes takes um bishop d3 i believe no wait no not bishop d3 bishop p2 yeah yeah bishop p2 the idea is to play c4 knight c3 and uh, since I'm always been a big fan of the Morozzi bind by limiting black's grip of the squares, this promises white sort of better position. Again, it's black do get a rather reasonable game, but I mean, I would always recommend for you if you have the possibility, try to aim for some kind of Morozzi bind because once you learn it, yeah, probably I should I should do a topic about it. Yeah. Now, now, now it gave me an idea. So it might be an idea for a future stream how to properly play out the Marozzi bind. What are the typical ideas? So definitely I'll cover this and I'll mention also this line. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I mean this line, uh, this line is sort of uh, sharp. 
Yeah, so after 94, 96, it was rather funny because I did this analysis. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll do it, doji -san. Yeah, I'll totally do this. Uh, this um, uh, how to properly pray out the Marotsi mind. And when I when I wrote a database, I believe that was yeah, I published the second database for modern chess, the Sicilian Rossolino. It was in 2019. That was last year. No, either that was an update or published. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So either I published or it was an update. I already forgot. I went to play in the United States. And something like one week after I published the database, I was playing two guys, pretty much a GM level, and they're playing against me, specifically this line which I had written in the database, that it's not har harmless, uh, it's, uh, it's harmless, yeah. So the idea is here that after bishop e2, here c4, here knight c3, takes, takes b6, I thought, okay, I mean, this should be rather uh, solid advantage for white because I'm a big fan of the Marozzi bind. And when I was actually playing these games, I realized uh, it, it's difficult to play. I played play the first game against uh, Alejandro Ramirez in the Vegas Chess Festival. And the second game I played a week after in St. Louis, Summer Chess Classic at one, against this young talent, Brandon Jacobson. Yeah. So I got rather dubious positions after the opening, but I got one and a half points somehow. Yeah, somehow got one and a half points. And typically uh, the idea for black is to play something like f5, takes a knight h4. Yeah, and when I was looking at this during the game, I I could not understand how could I have advocated something like this. I mean, anyway, this made me think that perhaps this D4 idea, which I advocated uh, myself uh, for as a great weapon in my database, perhaps it's too sharp because I was aiming for a solid advantage. And I came to realize that perhaps a much simpler move is the old move, rookie one. Yeah, and the point here after rookie one is again we stick to the same plan. We want to play c3, d4. By the way, we could have played immediately c3. We could have. Yeah, c3 to, to play idea d4. Black plays a6. Here, b5. Yeah, again, I, I mean, I don't really want to take there. Takes, takes, d4, d5. Uh, uh, to be honest, without a light square bishop, this feels like not really a great achievement. So potentially I'm risking that in the long term game, my light square bishop will be missing. So I've always been rather careful not to give up the bishops for no good reason. So that's that's why after a6, there's this idea of bishop a4, b5, bishop c2, still insisting to play d4, and there's also the move c4. Yeah, and I sort of wasn't really happy with the rising position. And this is why I came up to this move, which is already known before, to play rookie one. Rookie one, in, if black is going to play a6, then we are going to play bishop f1. And he can, and he should probably, he should play this. So a6, bishop f1. d5 is the absolutely best move here. Takes. Knight d5, and now we play d4. I hear the idea is uh, quite funny. Um, I know it's uh, paradoxical. We played bishop b5, then we played rook e1, and we treat with the bishop. And in the end, the bishop is gonna end up in the long diagonal, h1, a8. So something like, let's say perhaps, takes, 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 um, Bishop, yeah, I cannot, I cannot do this. Perhaps that wasn't really the greatest sort of the moves. Uh, how should I do this? Takes, okay, perhaps something like bishop e7, right? Then I can play g3. Maybe, ex again, not exactly the most accurate order of the moves, but the idea is there. Takes, takes, something like here. And typically, I want to position the pawn either in c3 or c4. c4 is also playable to get rid of this knight. But c3 is more careful, knight e2, knight f3, and black is always suffering because of this light square bishop uh, who is uh, causing some, some real problems for black. 
Yeah, and the actual theory here is the best move, absolute best move here, is that after d4, black plays knight f6, bishop e3, insisting still to take knight d5, bishop g5, f6, <laughs> and bishop c1. <laughs> That's rather funny theory there, but it ends up uh, in exactly this position. Uh, we are playing c3, g3, bishop g2, knight d2, and either, I don't know, knight f3 or knight e4, depending on the situation. And black is worse. Black is always somewhere worse. Um, this line has been played at the top level quite a number of times. It's sort of an older line. Uh, so, for example, let's uh, imagine if our opponent knows nothing there and he plays something like, I don't know, something like, yeah, let's say bishop e7. I have this opportunity now to take here, c4, and typically play a3, b4. So let's say black is playing something like this. We are going to play a3, b4, bishop b2, with rather significant space advantage. And if black is playing a5, this gives us opportunity now to play knight a4 and try to target this square. So knight a4, maybe c5, maybe bishop e3, and yeah, black is feeling uneasy all the time. So again, how did it happen? So we played bishop b5, e6, I'm sorry, yeah, e6. Uh, again, bishop takes on c6 is interesting. Yeah, why not? Um, knight e7, I advocate rook e1. Again, although I did write b4 as an interesting move, so probably at some time I'm, I'm going to release an update uh, by adding this rook e1. Uh, from time to time I release uh, updates uh, for my database at least a couple of times every single year, not to, uh, not for them to be become obsolete and uh, not really modern theory. So after c, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, rook e1, a6, bishop f1. I mean, black doesn't have to do this. He, he doesn't have to push d5, but then you simply play c3, d4. Very easy. Let's say black is playing something like knight g6, which actually I've played before in some online games. I just play c3. Simple. Bishop e7, d4. Something like takes, takes. You want to play knight c3. Next move, d5. And I think, again, this is a great position to play the French. And you're going to get the French positions quite a lot. So in the French defense, this knight feels awkward. So let's say something like the short castle. And you're already thinking about ideas like g3, h4, h5, h6. Maybe something knight g5, maybe something queen h5. And the bishop goes here. Yeah, I've always been sort of um, a fan of these structures. Yeah, when I when I get the French, a so-called French structure from the various uh, anti-Sicilians, black pushes d5, you go past, you play e5, and get a really good version of the French. So it's not it's not great, yeah, for black. But again, what can he do? So here again, something like, yeah, maybe something like d6, but you play the same, right? c3, e5, d, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, again, you play d4. Or maybe actually h3. Yeah, h3 makes sense not to allow this bishop g4. Yeah, th this is not really theory here. Yeah, I'm sort of looking at the board trying to understand what we would play, but if black doesn't play for the main line d5 and knight e5, then, then you just execute the simple idea of c3, d4, and already you are better. Uh, there is this very interesting sideline. Um, after a6, bishop f1, d5 takes, and take with the queen. Uh, this line, uh, this move is not approved by the engines. So if you check the engines, they think it's uh, not a great continuation. But I was surprised that by this move not once. I realized this is a systematic move because I was playing online against a Russian GM, Vladimir Dobrov. He was always playing this line, so I imagine this is part of his preparation, although a computer doesn't really um, approve of this move. So I think the best move, how you can tackle it, is 
uh, forget the idea to play d4 and uh, simply play uh, some sort of a great version of the uh, high Vishnu high some sort of a great version of the king's Indian so you look at this position it might wait a second what what king's in there is no king's Indian now you play knight c3 queen wherever it goes I don't know queen d8 maybe um, yeah I don't know either a4 or not immediately let's say something like here oh I'm sorry I mixed up yeah I mixed up mixed up mixed up yeah sorry so a4 the knight goes somewhere there g3 bishop g2 the queen has to retreat knight a3 castle knight c4 whatever black is doing I don't know something like yeah you're already threatening to play a5 and you reach some kind of a king's Indian you want to play c3 d3 and queen b3 and if you would have seen some of the king's Indian positions you'd realize black has made a terrible move a7 a6 so he would have the same position with the pawn on a7 and he doesn't have to worry about the weakness on b6 yeah so I believe white is better here maybe there are some ideas also at some point to play h4 h5 h6 again because of this sort of misplaced knight on g6 but um yeah but this is uh, like um yeah you oh you 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 just played it on which line was it yeah which line was it i mean maybe maybe we can immediately see according to my knowledge how did you play did you play the best lines or or what did you play yeah so anyway I mean after d5 takes queen d5 that's not really the best move because of the a4 or maybe you can start with the g3 as well yeah g3 bishop g2 a4 knight a3 knight c4 d3 and probably c3 and queen b3 so again this proves that the ideas they mirror in many many lines so it wouldn't really hurt that even if you don't play let's say some some kings indian some queens indian some other lines some sicilians that you would know at least some ideas even if you don't play them because they might mirror in different openings so it never really hurts right okay so there is a rather tricky move here after rookie one i believe black has a very interesting move um yeah but that's not Rosalino, that's Moscow Russian, anti, anti neither. Yeah, Bishop A4, I know this. This is <laughs> uh, tricky stuff. Yeah, I think I pretty much I forgot to mention this because against the neither, there's so many anti lines. Yeah, I did not mention Bishop A4. Yeah, there was a rather, rather nice idea about this one. Yeah, perhaps I would love to uh, tell you once story about it, why people play Bishop A4 if you don't know it already yeah so it was I actually started that position which you mentioned I started the c4 not bishop a4 but the idea of bishop a4 is provoke black to play a6 first and then you play c4 <laughs> yeah it's crazy okay um yeah so after castle knight g7 rookie one there is this move 94 which I believe okay I see oh you played c3 and then it transposes to one of the main lines so here the idea of knight e4 is black is stopping your ideas to play c3 d4 and if you don't really uh if you don't really want to um okay i see yeah i see i see about the e6 yeah about the e6 i actually I, I brought a database for that. Yeah, it's the it's the it's the um, third database. E4, C5, Knight of 3, 6. I'm advocating G3. You know, I'll probably do this either the next bootcamp or the next after that. Yeah, so that I want to give some sort of um, overview of the anti-Sicilians because I sort of feel like I'm an expert in these lines. I did devote quite a lot of time studying them, and I've published three commercial databases for them. And yeah, against e6 g3. Uh, but here, uh, specifically here, knight e4, the idea is that you would love to take normally and play something like c3. 
But the problem is, I thought already last week. <laughs> yeah, didn't you? Weren't you there? I mean, last Friday I was doing the mask operation. Uh, although not all of it. I mean, it was sort of um, yeah, it was sort of an overview. I I did did something, but I, I was trying to show uh, very side lines, very interesting lines, perhaps which you didn't even know. Yeah, and I did touch the main stuff which I wrote the database for, but not all of it, obviously. Yeah. And uh, here the idea is, if Blackwood played Dtex on C3, then you are very happy. Either you take with the knight, or you take with the pawn. You should be very happy about this because you're ahead in development. You control the center, so it feels nice. But the point is here, after C3, Black plays A6. You retreat wherever you retreat with the bishop. And black is never ever gonna get uh, let you control the d4 square. So that is the idea why black would play knight d4. So he wants to play bishop c5. If necessary, he is gonna play queen b6. He is never gonna allow you to play d4 and try to gain some space advantage. So this is perhaps the reason why taking on d4 is not really that great. Because then you don't gain the space advantage. If you play, yeah, okay, then we are, then we are eventually going to go to what I'm recommending. But you could play still the same idea, bishop f1. There's nothing wrong about it. But now black could play something like knight f3, queen f3, knight c6, and still for you it's going to be sort of difficult to push d4. So something like c3 bishop e7 he could even position the bishop here if necessary the queen here and i believe you're pretty much never gonna play d4 so that's the reason that's the reason which where i believe you have to take on d4 take take and organize something here although i mean i do agree that the rook on e1 feels misplaced it should have been better on e1 but i mean what can you do so every single move has a sort of a drawback. So this is the drawback of this line. And typically black plays something like uh, knight, no, which move is, okay, d3, knight c6, f4, a6 here, b5 here, here. And you just want to play some positional chess. Typically the queen goes something like on g4 or on h5, castle, queen h5, knight f3, f5 you have some ideas how you can try to cause some damage there this all this line also has been played at the top level not that many times uh because right now i believe more topical line here is which i mentioned to you ah, too bad i didn't check it yeah this this game carlson against karana yeah in the clutch chess pretty, pretty sure they played in the clutch chess yeah takes d3 97 how did they play there Ah, oh, wait a second. I think I remember. It was something like takes here, queen c7, e5, and at some point Carlson played knight g8. Yeah. Now, now I try to remember this, and this is really advanced stuff. Yeah. Maybe he played h6 and knight g8 something like this i mean this is very very deep stuff again i mean obviously carlson was looking for a fight corona didn't really mind so there were rather funny funny games yeah but i didn't check the, these games before i just saw them uh from afar yeah so after bishop b5 e6 castle knight e7 rook e1 like i said before you want to play c3 d4 if black is playing a6, you retreat with the bishop and f1. If black is not really actively playing in the center, you play c3, d4. You think so? He castle. I think so. Well, very, very quickly. Let me check it again. So bishop. Yeah, I did not check it. I mean, I'm sort of from memory because it was like, okay, I checked five minutes what they're playing, but I did not really analyze the line. Here, here. What was the... No, I'm pretty sure they castle here. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it afterwards, I promise. But I mean, you don't have to repeat this. This is a top GM level stuff, right? 
they have very deep theory and uh, it's um, not going to be easy for you to replicate what they're trying to do there. Uh, I just want to suggest something more simple, which is easier to play and perhaps with, them, with some tactical tricks. Yeah, but anyway, I mean, this E6 is, is interesting. And since Carlson has started to play this, uh, perhaps this means we are going to see more of it. Because essentially before uh, the match, Carlson against Karana, yeah, like I said, I mean, Rosalino was sort of a popular, but what they played, and now we are moving to G6, what they played in the match, G6, Bishop C6, and D takes, it wasn't really that popular before. I mean, people did play this, but it was believed that the supposedly main continuation after Bishop takes on C6 is B takes, B takes on C6. And uh, supposedly pawns take towards the center. Black is keeping a healthy pawn structure. And this was believed to be the main move. And the Carlson started to play D takes on C6 in the match. So everybody started to play D takes on C6. And it really, I believe it suits his style. This is why he, he chose this D takes C6 over B takes on C6. Although if he would check, I, I believe I'll, I'll show you those games. He played in the last last year was it Singfield Cup. Magnus played black against Maxime Michel Lagraf and he played B takes and C6 when Maxime actually played D4. Yeah, but we are gonna get to this. This this very, very rare move. Yeah, so the point of G6. The point of G6, obviously, I mean, black wants to position the bishop on the long diagonal, it's looking better there. He doesn't mind if black is at, white is at any given time uh, taking uh, H4. I mean, here, bishop B5, G6, H4. It feels weird. I mean, I understand, obviously, the idea, but what if black plays knight of 6? And you, you want to play something like e5, knight, g4. I'm not even sure that this h5 is such a threat. Yeah, I see what you're suggesting there. e5, knight, g4. Now I have to take there on c6. Um, b takes h5. Bishop g7. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not so sure if this is even a threat, what you are threatening there. Yeah, of course. I mean, in the ground field, uh, there is this idea to play h4, h5. And this is why, actually, this is why Corona was playing this. And this is one of the main lines here. If you take on c6, take, take, d3, the knight never goes there. It goes on e7. And this is why white pushes h4, to stop the future knight g, knight g6. So that's the idea. White voluntarily pushes the, the pawn forward and tries to gain some space advantage and disturb the knights. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's interesting. Com computer doesn't approve your idea, but, but I mean, as far as I know, black here plays knight of six. There is such a move. So g6, h4, and then knight of six doesn't f really feel like a dangerous position because here black plays knight of six and white doesn't play e5 that i know so with inclusion of h4 g6 probably this is even a better version for black probably <laughs> yeah but you know computer yeah sometimes you, we can think of our own ideas and ask them to computer this is essentially how the preparation at the top level works because computer uh, suggests only these top moves and sometimes uh, not sometimes, rather quite often, top GMs find rather funny ideas the computer doesn't even think about. It's not among the top suggestions, and this is why they're not prepared. But when you think deeper and deeper, you realize it's not really that simple. So it's, I believe you would have to uh, use the engines as a tool. I mean, you cannot ask the engines uh, strategic advice. The engine's not, not for that. You are the one who has to bring some questions. You, you are the one who has to ask some questions for the engines. And ask engine to calculate your idea. Is this working or not? 
So for example, this is actually a rather nice idea, even though perhaps it's not working. So you think, okay, since in the ground floor there is this idea of H4, H5, I'm asking the engine, is this working or not? And the engine easily discards this, okay, this is not working. And, okay, okay, this is not working. But perhaps there are some lines when you ask the computer, and you know what? There is no greater delight. When you think of something which computer doesn't even think about, it's not among the top choices, and you ask him, and he says, you're right. It's, you know, it's really, it really feels great because, I mean, there is some hope for the human, humanity, right? Because we can think of our human ideas, which computer is sometimes unable to think of, and then he says, okay, you were right, yeah, so this is a great idea. I didn't think about this. Okay, so the idea here after g6, uh, bishop c6, uh, why bishop c6? If you were following the match, Carlsen against Corona, obviously you were, most of you, I believe you were, uh, back in 2018, uh, Corona in the first two games, I believe the first and the third, yeah, the first and the third, he played bishop takes on c6 because that's the most ambitious continuation. So he was playing bishop c6, but when he realized it's not working, his preparation has been refuted, he switched back to the old move, short castle, bishop g7, and rook e1. That's the old move. Yeah, people used to play this before, a long, long time before. And it used to be the main line here, something like this, knight f6, e5. Now again, you would love to play c3, d4. Yeah, I probably have to mention this. You would love to play c3, d4, but there is a problem. So for example, I play c3, black is playing castle, white is playing d4, and black unfortunately has the access for d7, d5. Point being, I mean, takes on d5 is not really granting white an advantage, and e5 is knight e4. And this line is sort of believed as a drawish line. It liquidates at the top level, at the GM level, rather quickly. White is not achieving any advantages. So immediately playing here c3, d4. Okay, there is this quiet move, c3, castle, and h3. Yeah, it's supposedly more quiet more popular with the idea if black is pushing d5 we are gonna play e5 now knight e4 is impossible because of the d3 so we play here and now we play this idea which we already know from the some of the Rosalimo lines which is d3 and c4 fix these pawns make this bishop look bad so something like here um yeah, there may be something like a5 and c4. So knight c3, knight a4, b3, bishop a3, you are targeting this pawn on on uh, c5. Um, no, no, it's okay, you're asking the questions. Yeah, GM, Abdullah, GMs remember these nuances. We have to, <laughs> unfortunately, because if you want to beat another GM, you have to know many, many nuances, obviously. It, it, Unfortunately, it doesn't really work like that unless you are a huge talent. Yeah, you're a huge talent. You know ten moves, and there are some, some obviously raw talents uh, who know very little tier, and they have such a huge class, and they go and outplay the, their opponents like uh, without really theoretical knowledge. But uh, you know, but Firuja, he he knows rather well the openings. No, I was more referring to perhaps. Uh, Granda Zuniga, I believe he is always being not really that great opening expert. Um, who else? Actually, Carlsen, I mean, used to be not really that good at openings before. It was something like perhaps 10 years ago. He was, you, you might remember, he was relying mostly on his positional finesse. He was not going for sharp lines. He was not going for the topical lines. I mean, look at him right now. It's crazy. He's playing the top lines everywhere. I remember the time when he was playing. He's always trying to avoid the main lines, go for the positional struggle. And now he is yeah, testing everybody. And he has such a fantastic memory. Yeah, so obviously, uh, answering the question for Abdullah, we have to remember these nuances. But, you know, uh, I believe that the most important part is 
perhaps not remembering the exact lines. You remember the ideas. That's that's what's important. You remember the structures. You remember the ideas in which position to execute which uh, idea. So if I have these double pawns on c6, c5, I already, for example, here, I already think about I won't push d4. Why would I want to push d4? I just undouble his pawns. I want to fix those pawns. I recognize the idea. Perhaps not essentially from this line, from this uh, from this specific variation, but I, I know this idea. Because I remember this line from the bishop b5, e6, knight g7 ideas. And there was this idea to play d3, c4. This position is similar. Um, uh, it's actually not only theory 20. You know, you know there's some crazy lines like Batvinnik variation. There's theory at move 40. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's crazy. I mean, I've never been uh, a big fan of uh, long, long theoretical lines. The Ding Lorenz strength? Um, I don't know. I mean, he is like a computer. No emotions. He is super cool. Yeah, he is some Chinese school. I don't know. Really cannot cannot explain his phenomenon. That he is uh, approaching it somehow differently. I believe he is always keeping it cool. Yeah, and uh, obviously he has very deep knowledge. He is playing pure computer chess, I believe. Uh, yeah, I mean, studying studying uh, theory can get boring. I mean, it's extremely important that you get fun in the process. Yeah, I mean, otherwise, I mean, you know, when I was uh, when I was uh, something like 10, 10 years younger, I also hated theory. But I realized I, I cannot really progress. So if I know my, my little tricks and uh, these offbeat lines and I'm not studying something more, uh, especially I, I studied these, okay, not even not even 10 years ago, something like five years ago. I studied these offbeat lines and they're very good up to a certain level, I believe. And I, I came to a tournament, a couple of tournaments, and there was a 2650 player against me. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna outplay him without theory. So I was playing something like the Reti, Knight of three, G3, Bishop G2. I think I'm such a great positional player. <laughs> I'm gonna outplay him without theory. So it won every single game, it lasted something like 20 moves. Nothing, nothing works. Because obviously they know how to play. I mean, everybody knows how to play. <laughs> and I realized in order to beat very good player, you have to study theory, otherwise it's it's impossible to beat them. They know this uh, uh, how to play position so well. Perhaps sometimes you'll get lucky, but if you're thinking about long term, now I'm perhaps speaking too much uh, GM level, but uh, uh, well, that's a big, big long question there. At which level mainline? It depends on you. I mean, what do you want? I mean, you can how much time you can invest uh if you can invest a lot of time if you have a good memory yeah that's a good moment a moment if you have a good memory definitely go for the main lines if you don't remember most of the stuff let's say you are studying something and and one month later you remember nothing so who cares you made these all of these huge analysis if you're unable to remember them that probably doesn't really make sense to do this, right? Unless, of course, you are doing this for yourself to become a better player. But by studying some lines, uh, spending countless hours for lines which you are unable to remember, it makes no sense to me. So perhaps if you cannot remember them, you should switch to something more simple. Yeah, and there are many players out there who are doing exactly like this. Uh, there are not so many people who are so good at remembering theory everybody is forgetting i mean look at even the greats they're all the time forgetting you're looking at alexander grishev he's sitting there for something like half an hour in the opening he is not asleep he is trying to remember and most of the time he is thinking something like what did i analyze here five years ago he cannot remember okay five years ago i was looking at this in a training camp there was this line there was this continuation there was the sideline he's not thinking and trying to remember all of this so i mean at that level he has to remember this but uh yeah okay i mean anyway we have to move somewhere further um 
Yeah, so this is the backstory of why. Yeah, this was the, supposedly the old line of Short Castle. Um, yeah, E6 is is really high on tone. Yeah, it's it's good. We we checked it. We checked it in the beginning of the stream. It is definitely possible. It's rather interesting. I also mentioned that it was recently played in the Clutch Chess final uh, between Carlson and Karana. Although I failed to remember the games actually, so I just did not check them. So I apologize. Yeah, we checked it. Um, so here in the match, uh, Carlson against Karana. Karana was in the fifth game, I believe. He was opting for this line, and there is this tricky line e5. So after bishop g7, rook e1, knight f6 has the supposedly sort of a reputation, slightly worse for black. So something like e5, which is the main line, knight c3, knight c7, takes, takes, knight e4. Um, whoa, 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 I forgot something. No, sorry, not b takes, definitely. d takes, knight e4. There are two moves, either b6 or knight e6. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to show you approximate final position of the line. So something like d3, castle, bishop e3, here, 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 takes. Okay, maybe not takes, something like queen f4, here, here. And if you would ask this position for a computer, it's an equal, almost equal. I mean, there's nothing for white because black is super solid. He has a very nice bishop. But in a practical game, black is suffering because for white it's easy. He is threatening some checkmate ideas. Something h5, maybe bishop h6, then h5, h6 check. And go figure out. So computer is saying one thing. For, for a human being, it's not easy. And there's also some sharp lines here. So if black would opt for uh, knight e4, there's also the super modern move b6. There's a check, funny check. Yeah, so knight f6, here, here, bishop g4. What is the main move here? Oh, d3, here, here, and there is a queen sacrifice. <laughs> All of this has been known already. People play this. And there was this one crazy game. You won't be surprised who was involved. Of course, it was Daniil Dubov. He's always in all, all of the crazy lines. If there's a crazy position on the board, pretty much it means Daniil Dubov is playing it. And it's not a surprise he's part of uh, Magnus Carlsen's team right now, uh, giving him wonderful ideas in terms of opening preparation. But I mean, he's himself such a young and fantastic gifted player. And uh, <laughs> yeah, crazy genius. He's a very nice guy, actually. Uh, I've talked with him. He was... Uh, I was doing the commentary in Riga Grand Prix last year uh, in Riga together with Yevgeny Maroshnichenko and he was joining us for one day at least. Yeah, maybe there were more in the studios who were commentating together. He is a very nice and fun guy. <laughs> but he really likes to play. He has a special approach toward chess. So yeah, definitely that make, makes him sort of unique. Right. And yeah, like I said, he was one of the players who was playing this line. I believe the game was... Dubov against Mamedov. Yeah, now I'm, maybe you can check the database. I think it was Daniil Dubov against Rov Mamedov. If somebody would check the database, I'm not trying to recollect. Uh, his preparation, I'm, I wouldn't say it's superior. Yeah, it's obviously a different topic. He has different ideas. And he is not, he's paying attention to something what other people are not. Uh, he is taking, um, uh, probably he's finding finding these ideas first over the board himself. He's looking for fresh ideas, obviously backing them up with the heavy computer analysis, sometimes perhaps bluffing <laughs> when necessary. All right, and that's how he plays. I believe so, at least. Right. Okay, but uh, we are not going to touch this position, but you would imagine that in a World Championship match, Magnus Carlsen wouldn't want to play this line for black. I mean, why would he want to meet some computer analysis? Perhaps here. I mean, knight e4, b6, if knight f6, all of this idea, if, if this works, then black makes a draw. 
yeah, what was the move here? Bishop d1, bishop h6, king g8, knight e7, knight c6, sorry, bishop c2. Uh, now I keep forgetting. Was it? Was it knight f6? Yeah, ah, knight c5, b takes, knight e7, and this. Yeah, I believe that was the crucial position. <laughs> Computer says that it's nothing, it's nothing, but he doesn't understand. The rook on h8 is never coming out. So computer is unable to understand this. So there was this famous game. Now somebody could please check the database. I think it was Daniel Dubov against Rolf Mamedo. This is my memory. Maybe it was colors reverse. Maybe it was Daniel Dubov with black, but I'm pretty sure he was with white. Yeah, it, it, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, he likes material, but computer typically is calculating until some point. He sees first, let's say, depth 15 means he sees 15 moves ahead. If he still has the extra piece, he says, you're okay. That's computer evaluation. This is why sometimes human beings are so much superior to computers, because we see this, this rook on h8 is not going to get out, most likely. Okay, anyway. Uh, let's go back to the theory. Yeah, and uh, this is the reason why e5 has been more popular and actually rather rather uh, smart choice by Magnus Carlsen because bishop takes on c6, d takes, we reach a very typical position for the Rossellino. Again, b takes is not so great because c3 d4 white gets the upper hand something like here 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 knight c3 knight b3 bishop f4 that's a classic white is better you can back it up at the computer maybe in the beginning and th he'll think it's not really that much but black is, uh, i'm sorry white is better yeah white is better i apologize yeah so after e5, Caruana in the match, actually he tried b4. Yeah. He tried b4, and unfortunately for him, Magnus Carlsen was prepared. Uh, let me let me try to find this game for you. Um I let me check it very quickly. Yeah, there we have it. There we have it. Yeah, this was the fifth game of the World Championship match, and Corona actually chose B4, which was a rather tricky idea, but on, unfortunately he was playing against Magnus Carlsen, who already knew this. Uh, C takes on B4 is less clear, because White is playing a gambit. A3, B takes, Bishop A3 looks rather dangerous for Black. So black typically gives up the pawn and white emerges with some sort of advantage. Yeah, but anyway, I mean, I didn't really want to pay too much attention for this, but the point is, if if uh, white is going to take bishop takes on c6, d takes, we are reaching uh, one of the core positions with a weird move, rook e1, and black has played e5. And uh, there's nothing better white can do, so... Uh, yeah, sort of perhaps reverse the Benko. So Karana tried for one game. For one game he tried b4 in the match. And after knight b4, bishop b2, a6, Carlsen was really well prepared. This was a really great game. And he switched. He switched from the Rosalimo from the fifth game and in the whichever game it was. No, no, no. Sixth game because at some point they changed the colors. Yeah, I forgot already, but he switched the open open Sicilian. He started to play d4, and again he was unable to achieve anything. This is how well was uh, Magnus uh, Carlsen prepared for the match. Yeah, but uh, what I wanted to recommend here is after g6, I recommend to take on c6. And here's the thing: Black has two moves, either b takes or d takes. So if Carlsen uh, is playing d takes on c6, we can check it first. d3, bishop g7. And here's the funny thing. If we would check the old books about this line, every single book is recommending to play h3. 
So here the classical line is h3, not to allow a bishop g4 to make it look bad, because the light square bishop has no really good squares here. So black is playing something like, not necessarily, but let's say, knight f6, knight c3, short castle, short castle, um, queen c7, here, here, um, what was it? Yeah, pretty sure it was something like knight h2. Maybe, yeah, pretty sure I mixed up already. Queen c7 was a real move, but idea is always the same. e5 is met by f4. Oh, sorry, uh, bishop takes and c6, d takes. But you know, if you're looking back to this World Championship match, I'm pretty sure that Carlsen never intended to play bishop g4. Because he doubled his pawns on uh, c6. And I think it would be an interesting idea for white try to um, save this tempo by not playing h3. So this is my suggestion, which I was actually playing a number of times in some online games, for example. <laughs> Nobody was playing bishop g4. Uh, yeah, so what black wants to do here? There are two ideas. Uh, pretty much in all of the scenarios, black wants to play e7, e5. It really depends at which moment. So let's say the ideal scenario for black. Um, let's say we are playing something like h3. I could play immediately e5. So now we are looking from the black's perspective. I am playing knight c3, putting the queen here. Knight f6, I'm making some ridiculous move here. Knight h5, bishop e3, castle. So we have achieved really a perfect position for black. White has no active prospects in none of the, neither in the center, neither in the queen side, neither in the king side. Black actually can think about pushing ideas f5, f4. He can think about playing knight f4, knight e6, I'm sorry, knight e6, knight e4, and clearly it seems that White has misplayed this. He has played way too slow. So we have to go back. So black wants to play at some point to play e5. But if black rushes it, for example, we are playing short castle. And he, I mean, not really rushes it, but uh, he plays it sooner than, sooner than later. He plays e5. You have access to a really great plan, which is a3 and b4. I think it's a very simple plan, probably the most easiest plan you will ever face. So you can try to play something like, let's say, how will you play it out? Let's start with a3. Yeah, I want to play b4 and bishop b2. So if black knows nothing here, he is going to play knight e7. Actually, I've met this line so many times in my own games. Yeah, he wants to get rid of the bad bishop, yeah, but... It's not really clear. Okay, maybe we... Yeah, maybe, okay, let's start with the uh, h3, e5. Okay, let's let's not allow the bishop to trade. Although I believe black is not really that threatening to play bishop g4. So we are going to play castle and uh, knight e7. And then we are going to try to employ this idea to play h3, b4. So we want to play b4. Black is playing here, b4. We want to take the pawn, and if he is going to take, now there is a very nice idea to position the bishop here, the knight here, here, and perhaps something like rook a3, queen a1. And this queen on a1 is controlling half of the board. That's really, really great idea. So if, if black is ready, and he understands all of these ideas, so most of the players, they do. He wants to meet this idea B4 somehow. So he could play something like A5. That's rather a logical idea. And now you have access. Uh, you would want to push it somewhere in B2, B4. Because I know computer typically suggests this move as a good move. So let's say a4, castle, 
knight a3 knight c4 b3 bishop b2 it's uh, completely playable yeah and i'm pretty sure i also recommended it in one of the lines of my database but black is not really bad i mean he's just solid uh computer doesn't understand this position rather well so it is playable but there is one more interesting line much more interesting line so here's this idea to play bishop e3 we want to fix the pawn on b6 here now we want to play knight d2 we want to play knight c4 attacking here and now we want to play b4 that is the idea i played this number of times every single time black is falling into this trap so it's a really nice positional trap again how did it happen i mean black supposedly made all of the good moves not i mean not really but uh by by the looks they made really really normal moves so now he's suffering this pawn on b6 is feeling awkward c takes is impossible because of bishop b6 his position falls apart a takes takes then there's the pawn on e5 b5 and knight e5 i'm pretty sure i recently even played the blitz game in this line yeah so again so let's say our opponent is playing d3 bishop g7 short okay maybe let's let's play h3 although i think it might be an interesting idea sometimes to avoid this move because not always black is going to play bishop g4 and give up his bishop on f3 so i was slightly surprised that karana even even try try this line because if carlson is going for this line voluntarily he's playing d takes on c6 i would think he was thinking how to preserve his two bishop advantage and not immediately give up the bishop on g4 and f3 i think so but okay i mean what do i know um so h3 let's assume black is playing e5 early e5 gives you earlier possibility to play a3 b4 so okay let's say black is playing the best moves queen e7 and now again we are playing the same a3 we want to push b4 so there's for example this thematic pawn sacrifice it's rather easy they here b4 takes takes queen b4 is dangerous here knight d2 and the king is stuck in the center there's knight c4 threat there's rook b1 threat uh so doesn't feel like a great position for black to go Uh, so he probably needs to stop this this idea to play b4 because if he allows i mean okay he also could not take on b4 but now you just take yourself on c5 queen c5 a4 bishop a3 force him to play c5 and now you play c4 knight c3 and knight d5 that's the idea I mean okay normally still black gets a okay game it's not like a high opening uh, bell it's not like this is a recipe for huge advantage for white it's just a game plan because i believe in every single opening black is doing okay so it pretty much comes down to the moment when you're choosing what do you like most Yeah, so let's say black is stopping this idea of a3 b4 he wants to stop it and he plays b5 a5 i'm sorry and now you have this option now you have this option to play either a4 fix that weakness on b6 but it's gonna lead to a static position with a lot of maneuvering it's completely fine why not you can play this or you can try to insist on this idea to play bishop e3 knight e2 and perhaps at some moment b4 although the pawn is not there on b6 so something like here knight e2 castle um knight c4 and think about some ideas to conjure something there at the queen side yeah although i believe that here particularly something like knight d7 yeah probably without the pawn on b6 this b4 idea uh, doesn't really make much sense right yeah 
so that's that's more like reserved for this moment when black misplays this position he puts the knight passively here and you manage to force your opponent to play b6 yeah then you can think about this idea knight e2 knight d4 knight c4 and b4 then the opponent b6 is feeling weird uh yeah f4 that's the that's the other idea this is the first idea so you can pretty much choose one of those ideas there's by the way by the way there's also this funny idea um there's also this funny idea to play um knight c3 now you play a3 and at any given time if black is going to play a5 you have access to knight a4 knight a4 and the same idea bishop e3 and b4 this is actually also rather interesting yeah, so something like again now black is forced to play b6 and now you play bishop e3 but again this knight on e7 it's it's not a good move it's a typical uh a typical sign that the opponent is not has not studied this line so a really smart player here for black or at least somebody who has studied this he'll play in the beginning first e5 he'll play in the beginning queen e7 because knight f6 the pawn is under attack on e5 right so he needs to protect his pawn first on e5 and now you want to play again the same idea so we might try to combine this idea somehow let's say um let's start with knight c3 knight f6 and a3 can we do this and if black is pushing a5 now we can think about knight a4 and bishop here knight e7 yeah although yeah again the follow-up of b4 is not really clear i don't think there's anything wrong no no you can play queen c7 you can yeah you can uh the th uh, why i'm suggesting queen e7 is that queen on e7 protects the pawn on c5 already so something like it is possible of course yeah so let's say e5 short castle queen c7 it is possible of course so you can try play against the same idea knight f6 but now you're forcing him to play b6 so that that's the difference so b6 oh wait a second yeah so i'm sorry a uh, a3 we would love to play b4 so he plays a5 now we play bishop e3 b6 and knight e2 yeah that's the difference and uh, let's say knight f6 knight c4 again the threat is b4 although i mean he could position the knight on d7 again maybe it's not really that a big deal there's some, fun some funny ideas to play queen b1 um sorry b4 and try to organize some some kind of activity there i mean these are the typical ideas if you are playing at the queen's side and that's the plan number one it's very easy to play this very positional and uh, totally difficult to misplay this yeah and the second plan the second plan is pushing the f4 which already was mentioned in the chat so we play h3 e5 uh, castle okay let's position the queen here but you know what i think the plan of f4 is not great if black goes for the early e7 e5 let me explain why the point is as soon as you're going to play something let's say bishop e3 b6 knight h2 black has access to knight h5 and i believe this is a crucial position for you to remember you should avoid this position from white if black can manage to play e5 and knight h5 to stop your idea to play f2 f4 there's nothing for white i mean of course it's still possible to play this you can play something like very slowly knight d2 queen d2 bring the rook here b3 a4 and then in the end uh not to blunder the pawn on b2 you're finally pushing f2 f4 yeah but it's slow it's really slow so i think if black is going for the very early e5 
he is closing this bishop very quickly. He is doing this so that he can position either queen on e7 or on c7. Very quickly he can play knight f6, knight h5 against the f4 threat. This is a clear signal. You should organize the game at the queen side. a3, b4. How do you do it? The order of the moves. Well, it's probably up to you. So something like, again, I'm not even sure that castle is uh, necessary here. Maybe you can start with a3 immediately. So a3, a5. Bishop e3, queen e7, um, knight d2. Yeah, but most likely you're going to end up with a4 anyway. Yeah, because black hasn't played b6 and you don't have access to this knight c4, a3, b4 threat targeting the pawn on b6. Yeah, but this is really the best. Uh, I'm showing you the best set, uh, system for black. And when black is playing the best, uh, white doesn't really claim any advantage, even though computer says white has an advantage. It's just a balanced game. And uh, yeah, so perhaps, you know, I, I would be thinking about here. I would be thinking of perhaps I want to save a tempo for H3, which I mentioned before. So I'd be thinking about, okay, I can try to make a castle first. And if black is pushing E5 immediately, now I supposedly want a tempo for H3. If black is exchanging the bishop on g4, I mean, let him. So where's the big deal? Let him. Right? So something like knight d2, knight f6, h3, takes, takes. I mean, so be it. You still have sort of a better position. He has doubled the pawns for no good reason. And that's at least my approach. And I've played it at the GM level a number of times. And black pretty much never was playing bishop g4. So you can try to save this tempo for h3, and uh, let's say black is still playing e5, and now again you play a3. a3, queen e7, so we can try to push b4. Okay, so we he allowed this, so after a3, a5, you can try to make it happen with something like knight c3, or maybe more correct move was knight c3, queen e7, and a3. We are threatening to sacrifice the pawn, a5, and now we want to play knight a4. Here, oh, okay, there's some weird move, knight b6, knight c8, what is this? Yeah, some weirdness. I mean, these lines, they're super, super similar. Super similar to each other, so I'm showing this everything from memory. So obviously, I have written a database full of this. So probably to be totally 100% accurate, I would have to open the uh, database and show you exactly what I wrote in the database. I'm showing these structures for you from memory. So if black is keeping this bishop open for as long as possible, he is not rushing with e5. You cannot obviously plan this idea to play a3, b4. So this is when you are playing Okay, let's let's stick to this h3. Let's assume it's a good idea. Knight f6, knight c3, castle, castle. And again, here the rule is this: you should try to avoid for your opponent to manage to play e5 and knight h5 in one go. So for this reason, bishop e3. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, castle, castle. Yeah, for this reason, including bishop e3 would be a sort of a mistake. A sort of a mistake. Because b6, castle. Now black manages to play e5. He wants to play knight h5 the next move. And if we take on e5, he takes on e4. That's the idea. Yeah, probably I'm already speaking way too much at once at this moment. But anyway, I mean, the point is here that you want to avoid this bishop e3 for as long as possible. Castle, castle. Black is playing queen c7. And now that, yeah, now that he wants to play e5, or let's say he is playing b6. 
No, now typically I think he plays queen c7. Yeah. Queen c7, bishop e3, b6. He did not manage to play e5 and knight h5. And now we are playing knight h2. Knight h2, e5, and hope I did not mix up anything. And f4. Yeah, that's the idea. And organize something at the king side. Yeah, it's really advanced stuff. What can I say? So after knight of three, knight a6, bishop b5, uh, g6, short castle, bishop g7, there's also the move bishop takes on c6 and b takes on c6, which was played, which was considered to be a main move before Magnus Carlsen made his world championship match against uh, Fabiano Corano when he started to play d takes on c6. And if you're seeking for a simple play, there is a very simple plan for you. You can play a rookie one. Knight f6 is not so great. You are pushing e5, d4, take with the queen, rearrange the queen to h4, and the plan is to play bishop h6, c4, and knight c3. And this is the position where actually black is worse. White gets a solid advantage in this. I mean, okay, I don't know how solid, but definitely white is uh, better. Why does black have to defend the pawn with the queen? Uh, where in which, which line? Which line do you refer? Is there a reason why knight e4 doesn't always work? Ah, you're referring to that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll I'll tell you this. Let, let's go back shortly. Uh, so this bishop b5 g6 takes takes castle. Okay, uh, let's start with the d3. Bishop g7 h3 knight f6 castle castle knight c3 queen. Oh, okay. Let's let's start with let's say knight c3 castle. And let's assume we rushed with bishop e3. I'll show you the difference. We rushed with bishop e3. Now here, this pawn on c5 is protected. These tactics. They work in black's favor. That's the difference. So if I take on e4, black takes on e5, I cannot take this pawn. Let's go back. Let's go back to this position. I play h3, knight of 6, knight c3, castle. Castle. Now I want to play, depending on how my opponent is going to play it out, I want to play knight h2 and f2, f4. My opponent would love to play e5 and knight h5. Like I mentioned before, this is the critical idea which black usually tries to achieve. Now I simply take. And this pawn is simply under attack. That's the difference. I hope I answered uh, to you this um, difference. Why you should be careful about this, including this bishop e3. Because if black manages to play e5, knight h5, he has a very good position. So here we are we are keeping tabs on this idea. So black cannot play e5. He has to do something else. If he would play b6, now be careful. Again, if I'll play bishop e3 with the idea, there's this idea, bishop e3, queen d2, bishop h6, so on and so forth. Black is going to push a5 and knight h5. We don't want to allow this. Uh, so after b6, yeah, I'm pretty sure now you can already play bishop f4 because black did not play e5. And you can try to execute the same idea. Queen d2, bishop h6, rook e1, knight perhaps retreats somewhere, f4, f5, and try to checkmate your opponent. It's rather easy game for you at the king side. And uh, yeah sort of slightly better for you yeah i hope i answered your your question so we are going to the critical moment after takes with the b pawn 
castle of bishop g7, there is this quiet move, rook e1. And after rook e1, you would love to play something like c3, d4, which is probably always the simplest approach for you. Knight f6 is not the best move, again, for this reason, e5, d4, c takes, take with the queen. Queen goes on h4, bishop goes on h6, pawn goes on c4, knight goes on c3. So black here plays knight h6. Yeah, okay, you're welcome. So black plays knight h6. He wants to keep this bishop alive and perhaps at some moment push f7, f5 after he has made the short castle. Now you play c3 here. You could play d4, takes, takes. And here it really depends how well is prepared your opponent. If he has studied some modern theory, he will know that here the best move is d5. Everybody already knows this at quite a good level. And after e5, f6, if your opponent does know this, you could opt for this quiet position. Knight c3, h3, b3, bishop a3. Knight a4, so on and so forth. It's it's not much, but it's a very quiet and easy to play position, pretty much without a risk for you. So you can go for this. If you are looking for a fight, yeah, then there is a very big theory. You can play h3 first, trying to like wait out for your opponent to make a move first. Let's say he would play d6, now you play d4 takes takes and now it makes almost no sense for him to play d6 d5 because he already played d6 a move before i mean sorry two moves before yeah so uh, after um h3 there is a very big theory after f5 e5 knight f7 yeah and the theory only is starting developing here either you go d4 takes takes c5 very very sharp game black bishop goes to b7 he sacrifices the pawn somehow he, he regains the pawn and if you play positionally like in a typical rosalimo with d3 c4 knight c3 try to get to this pawn black typically sacrifices this pawn he goes something like i mean not always but there is this idea play e6 g5 h5 g4 and total craziness yeah and uh, when i was looking at this uh e6 instead of ef yeah yeah there is that that's also a line yeah it is it it's more ambitious um bishop g7 rook e1 knight h6 here here uh h3 i'm sorry which line was it f5 no i ah, mixed up sorry i mixed up d4 takes takes here here f6 eases. yeah here you mean this line right yeah it is playable it's also being played at top uh, perhaps not really at top gm level but it is a very double-edged con continuation so if you manage to keep the pawn on e6 and get a positional game let's say transport the knight to c5 to keep the pawn on e6 you'll get a very good position but the pawn on e6 is the target i um, i think i analyzed this slightly in my database this move e5 e6 yeah it's sort of a sharper continuation yeah you're looking for a fight uh i was looking for a more quiet approach so this is why i recommend the d takes e takes but you know when i when i analyze this I wrote a database, I published the database. This was the last chapter of my database of the Rosalima Sicilian. I wasn't really happy because I felt I should have done more. But I was unable. I mean, I spent so much time trying to uh, keep the spirit of the database. Um, uh, propose anti-Sicilian approach. It, I mean, it would be crazy, right? I mean, I'm advocating to play anti-Sicilian approach offbeat lines which have heavy theory <laughs> why would you want to do this 
right? I mean, it, uh, uh, Swiddler, maybe there are other GMs also there play this. I do not recall Swiddler's game, unfortunately. Yes, I know this move, yeah. But uh, the point is, I thought, why would I want for you to recommend to play this line, h3, f5, e5, here, with this craziness? And what is this? This is not offbeat Sicilian. This is the Sicilian, <laughs> the main line, of the Rosalimo. And I thought, no, wait a second. I mean, this is this is too much. And I realized I need to do something. I need to change something. And I saw. I don't remember. There was a very rare move. Somebody played this at the GM level. Maybe it was actually not that I think of this. Maybe it was. Either Firuja, Alreza Firu, Firuja, Firuja, how do you spell him? Firuja, let's let's assume he is Firuja. Uh, against his compatriot from Iran, they were playing a game. And, or maybe there was a different game, but anyway, I mean, I noticed this idea d4. I'm sorry, instead of the castle, d4. And this is uh, becoming really trendy move right now. Uh, the game I mentioned before in the beginning of the bootcamp, there was, there was a very nice game uh, between Maxim Vashvela Graf against Magnus Carlsen in the previous, I believe, Sinkfield World Cup. No, my, my, yeah, my tongue is messing with me. Uh, Sinkfield Cup. <laughs> Why World Cup? Because Maxim Vashvela Graf after this game, one month later, he played in the World Cup for the bronze against Timura Jabov. No, that wasn't a bronze. That was... Wait a second. That wasn't a bronze. That was the semi-final. What was it? When when Maxim Vashilagrab, he played against Timura Jabov. Now, now, I, now I'm confused. I thought that was a bronze. But wait a second. Rajabov won, won, the, won the World Cup. <laughs> yeah. I sort of from memory thought they, they were playing for a bronze, but uh, yeah, my facts are wrong. I need to check which which tournament stage was this was this uh, when Maxim was playing against Timura Jabo. But anyway, um, something like one year ago, D4 was a very very rare move. It was played something like five games, maybe four games, five games. I don't know. And I thought, okay, I mean, this is rather interesting, rather unexplored. Computer was supporting this move, this weird move of undoubling the pawns. And I started to study this. I did my study and realized, wait a second, I mean, this is super interesting. So I decided to write an update for the modern chess uh, semifinal. Okay, yeah. So Rajabov won, and then, as we know, since he won the World Cup, yeah, I, I thought that was a match for the third place. Yeah, too bad. For some reason. Yeah, who did he beat for the third place? Maxim Vashelograv beat somebody for the third place. Now I've, yeah, I, I've mixed up the facts. It, it doesn't matter. So here the point is, the point is here, that if black is playing C takes, uh, I'm sorry, not C takes. If black is playing, yeah, uh, yeah, it's C takes, queen d4, knight of six, e5, knight e5, here and we reached the same structure i already was very happy because i already analyzed this i know this line with a different order of the moves uh bishop h6 c4 knight c3 uh i talked about this right c4 knight c3 in supposedly promising white quite uh, quite a good game yeah so this is why uh, for example, black would play one of the critical moves, not c takes in d4, but bishop g7. And there's a very nice trick which you could try to use yourself. Ah, you Yangui, yeah? You Yangui. Okay. So bishop g7, uh, d takes, queen a5, knight d2. And the idea is very simple. I want to play rook, uh, I'm sorry, short castle. I want to play rook e1. This is the main line. And I think it was knight b3, queen b6, and e5. 
and white is at every single position pretty much slightly better but there's this very nice trick and some gms have fallen into this <laughs> because this is an unknown line so here after um d4 bishop g7 d takes queen a5 knight d2 black sees oh wait a second i have this move bishop a6 <laughs> the white king is not going anywhere right i i'll take the pawn on on uh, on c5 later i'll keep the white king in the center and if white is gonna play c4 i'm just gonna take it keep this spin alive yeah and this move has been played at the gm level more than several times and every single one of them were missing this move rook b1 <laughs> it's a crazy move and uh, very very easy to miss this and i think this is one of the really great perks of this line yeah oh thank you sleepy mario yeah you're referring to my uh, twitch partner yeah it's uh today it's a celebration stream <laughs> This is my first ever stream as a Twitch partner. <laughs> yeah, yesterday I was slightly surprised my Twitch partnership got approved. And um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm supposed to not streaming at a completely different level. <laughs> yeah, it's about the same level anyway, but uh, yeah, sort of in a celebration mode today. All right. Yeah, so I'm very happy. Yeah, so the idea of rook b1. The idea of rook b1 is let's say if you take here now I play b4, he is gonna play something like queen b6 and c4. And what what's so funny is that I'm gonna castle anyway, and black has made this terrible move of bishop a6. It it's not obvious, right? Okay, and we can go we can go back and instead of the instead of the queen takes on c5, black would try to okay, I can grab the pawn on, on a2 right queen a2 and now comes this amazing idea b4 and i want to capture some material so let's say black would be playing something like um let's say bishop b5 rook b3 here here and now black can simply resign <laughs> it's very easy right and there was also a very funny trick here let me try to remember this because i'm not using the database i'm showing this all of this from the memory so after queen a2 b4 there was also the idea to play knight f6 yeah but then was rook b3 wasn't it rook b3 rook a3 and black is losing something big time but where, wait a second where was this i'll try to remember this wait a second i'll copy this stuff here so that i i can show the actual idea i have some problems to remember this okay here we go I copied this from my database so d4 here 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 so yeah bishop a6 rook b1 um, b4 yeah for example uh bishop bishop b5 very human move yeah which i i started to show you uh rook b3 and black plays something like knight of six yeah there's this trick yeah there's this trick so now you play rook a3 here c4 here knight g5 and wave hand to your opponent <laughs> he loses the piece by force it's a very very nice trick yeah here again again black sort of things i'm gonna punish now white for playing this very weird line which uh which makes no sense because he's missing the light square bishop now we play a rook b1 exclamation mark queen a2 b4 
Uh, here, queen e6 immediately. The question is, where is your queen gonna go after knight g5? You might have not really good squares for your queen because you cannot position it here and here on e5 because of the bishop b2. <laughs> so you might as just well go back to a2. Yeah, so none of the moves really work here. So black, I think he had to pick up pretty much the only move bishop c4 to stay in the game, but this line is super dangerous. So bishop a6 is a bad move. But it's a very, very nice, nice trick. Uh, if you're talking about this game uh, between Maxim Vachela Graf and Ma Magnus Carlsen, uh, Magnus Carlsen played c takes on d4. Queen d4 and f6. It's a very, very complex game. Yeah, after a6, bishop a6, white is much better. Definitely, he's much better. Let me show you again, very, very shortly. Um, so you take, take, d4. Bishop g7 is a very human move, right? No, I mean bishop g7 is not a mistake. Queen a5 check, knight d2. So the best move is obviously queen takes on c5. He has to take the pawn. Yeah, hi, Batster. So after bishop a6, now we play rook b1. Queen on a2 is dangerous. Queen c5 is just worse. You just want to play b2, b4. If black is playing rook b8, just play a3. And then you're going to play b2, b4. So he takes here, again, b4. Then you're going to play c4, bishop b2, short castle. And his bishop is misplaced. That's essentially the trick of this line. But I assume right now people who have studied this, they already know this. So it's not really that a big secret anymore. It was something like half a year ago. <laughs> people didn't really know this line and they keep making the same mistakes. Yeah, uh, Yeah. so Carlsen played here, d4. He played f6. Because he didn't want to go for the knight of 6, e5. Again, I showed you. This is, I'm sorry, worst position for black. So this is why he chose to play f6. And the game progressed something like castle, c4, knight c3. And at some moment, Maxim Achille Lagraf employed a very interesting idea to play h4, h5. Yeah, I mean, this is obviously a topic for many hours, so we are not going to do this. But you can check the game. It's very, very interesting. And um, you can you can try to play it yourself. And in the World Cup match against Timur Ajabov, one month later, after the Sinkfield Cup, Maxim Vashilograph played Queen A4. Not to allow this D6, C5 idea. I mean, this is top stuff, right? And still he wants to put some kind of Marozzi. c4, knight c3, short castle, bishop e3. So again, I believe this is the uh, reason why for one of the future streams I'll do the Marozzi bind. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Right, okay. Yeah, and the, essentially one of the main lines here is, uh, so d4 takes, Knight d2, short castle. So black understands that he cannot play bishop a6. Um, d6, he needs to include otherwise after knight f6, I'm, I'm threatening with e4, e5. Here. All of this is pretty much forced. And we reach a very peaceful positional game. Something like c4, queen f3, bishop f4. It was actually funny. I wrote this update last year in midsummer, and I went to play in the tournament, and I got exactly the same line. <laughs> so if you check the database, I'm the only player who has ever gotten to this position. Up, I mean, up to this moment, uh, e4, e5, knight, e5, c4, queen f3, bishop f4, because in the database I finished uh, my research that that's the potential idea. You play like this and. I hope it works. <laughs> and I managed to check it myself in an actual game. So it was actually rather funny. I did not really expect that it's going to work. But I always 
play the lines which I recommend. So if I'm recommending to play Russell Emo, I'm playing Russell Emo myself. If I'm recommending Marozzi, it means I'm a big fan of the Marozzi line. So I recommend the stuff which I find to be uh, good to be. Right. Yeah, okay, I mean, this was uh, quite, quite complex stuff, obviously, but I, I hope you got a better understanding about Russell Emo. Uh, maybe for somebody it's not really that interesting, maybe somebody did appreciate it. I mean, anyway, that's the purpose of these uh, boot camps, to provide you with some theoretical knowledge. I'm doing this again, the boot camps I'm planning to do every every week, once once a week, every Friday. Okay, maybe in the summer I'll slightly adjust my schedule, because I, I believe I'll need a vacation at some point. <laughs> Yeah, but okay, we'll see about that for the time being. My boot camps are remaining on Friday, so if you like the content, please come and join. Every Friday, the hours might change. You can check, uh, you can check the schedule. Every beginning, uh, beginning of every single week, I update the schedule in my Twitch profile. And uh, yeah, see at what time is planned the stream for the particular week. Yeah, I believe I'm, I'm about to finish. It's very hot here in Latvia. I mean, it's difficult, <laughs> difficult to stream. It's something like plus 33. Yeah, today. Yeah, yesterday it was even hotter. It was plus 35. Yeah, so for chess players, that's. I mean, not only for chess players, for everybody, it's uh, uh, difficult, right? To concentrate and speak about deep stuff, right? Anyway, yeah. Thank you. Thank you that you were here. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, uh, thank you again that you were part of my way towards achieving my partnership of Twitch. So this was a sort of a little celebration today, celebration stream. Uh, my next stream is going to be next Sunday, this Sunday at midday. You can check uh, the schedule according to your time zone. Uh, my schedule according to the time zone. I'm going to play some Blitz against the viewers, perhaps against you. So if you would like to play, please come by, please say hello, and perhaps we are going to have some fun. Okay, thank you that you are here, and I'm about to finish, and have a great Friday, have a great weekend, see you, Batster, see you, everybody, and take good care. Goodbye.